Uh, in the context of Hillary, first of all, we judge people by their spouses, really. Second of all, it's like two, almost two decades old. Third, it was litigated through the American press, but the, the, fa the fascinating part about this is not Rand Paul's response, in which he said, oh yeah, Bill Clinton, he was a predator, you know, 20-year-old girl in his office, he's, he's, you know, having an affair with her, that's terrible. By the way, uh, the same rant. Fascinating news. 
science news I want to share with you too. 7,000 year old DNA, European hunter gatherers, and psychedelics.
thing is, before I became an officer, I was a broadcaster in the Marine Corps, where I wrote radio and television commercials. Some of the topics I used to write about were things like skin cancer. So you'd think that as I see this mole growing on my arm, it's changing in color and size, that I'd go and get it checked out. But I just sort of blew it off and really didn't give it much thought. It was only one mole, right? Well, I finally went to medical and they sent me to a specialist. And they told me it was a textbook case of melanoma. One of the scariest days of my life, all because I never wore sunscreen or covered up when I was on the flight line or out in the field. For more information about how to detect skin cancer, contact your healthcare provider. Now things are different. I cover up and I always wear sunscreen. And I do what I can to protect myself and make sure that this cancer doesn't come back. I caught your notice on Twitter, and so I thought I'd give a call. 
and it was in reference to the net neutrality. And in the past, I've done some writing. Of, I had a fair amount of, of uh, uh, correspondence with Coop back when he was like uh, number two and the, you know the good guy on the FCC. And that, that was when they wanted to consolidate the media overall. When Michael Powell was brought, trying to put through those so-called reforms. But everything that you're hitting on has one thread, a common theme, and that's what we're dealing with is, by, if by definition, fascism, right, a corporatocracy. We're talking about Alec. What is it when corporations are voting on the bills that our representatives are allowed to submit to their legislatures? That's fascism. What is it when they're in private prisons? fascism. And I, I coined this phrase that I used all the time during the consolidation of the media when they tried to do that. And that was that a consolidated media is essential to a properly functioning fascism. And, and you know, I know I just spoke a lot. And I, I didn't mean, and I'm good at that. So. No, I, I think your point is really well taken, TJ. And, and uh, you know, you, yeah, you see that uh, you see that across the media spectrum, and I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Okay. The, of it, so. the other thing is, you see, people conflate fascism with calling people Nazis. But now the Nazis were not fascists. The Nazis were a death You know this, and I know this. The Nazis were the Nazis, and they happened to be fascists. Yeah, well, they, they started out as fascists. They, 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 but the Nazi, Nazism was essentially superiority death cult. Uh, a, a, uh, a bigoted, uh, you know, death cult, and, and, and it was a religion as much as anything else. Uh, I'm with you. TJ, thanks a lot for the call. David in Brookfield, Connecticut. Hey, David, what's up? Hi there. I just want to talk about the Rand Paul question. Uh-huh. Thank you. Can I think you misinterpreted it? Uh, oh, David, you just faded out. Wherever you're, wherever you're, yeah, I, I'm guessing you're, it sounded like your cell phone's in your car and you're driving, because you said, I think he was, and then you just vanished. Uh, Karen in Sherman Oaks, California. Hey, Karen, you wanted to talk about David Gregory and Rand Paul? Karen? In Sherman Oaks. Okay, you gotta listen to your phone, not the TV or the radio, because there's a slight delay on the TV and radio. It's, it's longer for TV, actually. Joanne in Albuquerque, New Mexico, listening on KBQ. Hey, Joanne, what's up? Hey. Hey, Tom. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Thanks for calling. Yeah, the point I want to make is uh, I'm really appalled by Mr. Uh, by Rand Paul's remarks of our President Clinton. But mostly his insensitivity to women is exampled by his making those remarks that he doesn't give a crap about Monica Lewinsky and how she may be feeling right at this moment. You know, I feel for her, she made a mistake, she made a choice in her life that she probably isn't too thrilled about, and now he's dredging her through the mud again. Yeah. And that's the point I want to make. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, actually, the, the, the question was in the, in the context of, thank you, Joanne, who well said, uh, and the war on, the uh, Republicans' war on women, and so what does Rand Paul do? He pulls out a woman and, and you know, um, I was going to say beats her up, but that's that's too bad, too harsh a metaphor, and it's not. But yeah, it, this has got to be tough on on uh, Monica Lewinsky too. Karen in Sherman Oaks, California, can you hear me now? Yes. Are you there? I am. Oh, I was watching Meet the Press yesterday also, and I don't know who I was more upset with, uh, Rand Paul or David Gregory. Um, why Gregory didn't bring something up like the incident with Mark Sanford? If you recall, he was the governor who. Right, or David Vitter, who now, you know, is, who wants to run for governor, and then he was busted with a hooker, you know, or, uh, you know. The Appalachian trail to Argentina right. to meet his girlfriend, spent state funds, and
my sense of it. I mean, I've met him, but I have never met Monica Lewinsky. But my sense of it was that at the time that it was a groupie syndrome kind of thing. You know, it was uh, it was like you know the the young women who throw themselves at, at male rock stars, and you know being you know, power, fame, money, whatever. Um, and but yeah, okay, good point. Thank you, Karen. Well said, David in Brookfield, Connecticut. Hey, David. Hi there, sorry about that. I got uh, turned off before my call. Okay, try it again. Over. Yeah, I'm just saying in the context of Rand Paul, I think what he was saying that is, if uh, should Hillary rerun, uh, the the campaign, of, uh, the Democrat campaign slogan of the war against women by Republicans loses its strength because uh, her own husband was uh, accurately portrayed contrary to the last call as a predator. predator. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's what he's trying to say. You see, we, we litigated that already 17 years ago, and the majority, you know, Bill Clinton's popularity in office, the peak of his popularity, over 60% by presidential popularity, Bill Clinton right now is like 49%, or I mean, uh, Barack Obama is 49%. The peak of his popularity was while he was being impeached. I understand, but if you look, if that trial... So you really think trial, that the Republicans are going to use this against Hillary? No, no. No, I think that if, if, if the Democrats try to use it against the Republicans, that's what your grandpa is saying. No, no, what, what the Democrats are saying about the Republicans is that the Republicans... <laughs> Value 
ads were processed in a shallow manner. Dr. Stephen Grant with the National Institute on Drug Abuse explains that attention-grabbing ads never get past sensory processing. Low method sensation value ads activated areas in the frontal lobe that are involved in deep processing. So the meaning of the ads were being processed. Dr. Grant says that when asked, people in a recent study remembered the low message sensation value ads better. Health Matters is produced by the National Institutes of Health, part of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Say, I've heard a lot about this sponsorship program you Yanks have. Sounds like a right good idea. I'd like to give it a go. To start, I'd tell you what your new place is going to be like. And I wouldn't sugarcoat it. If there's a gaggle of mad fools running about, I'd tell you straight up. Maybe send some clever photos, too. Being a good sponsor means providing as much info as you can about your installation, your unit, and your host country. And answering all questions quickly, too. But do try to be positive. Me mum would be a good sponsor, too, now that I think about it. When Marlon Shirley was five years old, he was in an accident and lost his foot, but he didn't lose his heart. When you tackle a challenge that you just cannot even fathom tackling, when you accomplish that, the amount of integrity and the will and the heart that you'll get from that experience is what will set you up for your life. In less time than it took Marlon Shirley to say that, he can now run 100 meters because today he's the world's fastest amputee. Overcoming, pass it on. A vision for a better life at values.com.
Johnson had several affairs that are fairly well documented when he was in office. Jack Kennedy probably had hundreds, <laughs> certainly had dozens. We know for sure of several while he was in office. Dwight Eisenhower had a mistress all the time that he was, she was his, she drove his Jeep all the time that, that he was, uh, you know, in World War II and then she came with him to the White House and his wife put up with that and knew about it. Franklin Roosevelt had a mistress. His wife knew about it and put up with it. Um, in fact, that was one of the things that fueled the rumors that his wife was actually gay, that was actually a lesbian. And, uh, and, and, and who knows? Can I tell you, can I tell you something? But, I, but Bill Clinton, the difference between Bill Clinton and all those other presidents is that he got caught. Yeah. Well, he did it in the White House, but let me, let me tell you very briefly. I don't think he was the first. No, but let me tell you about Eisenhower. George Marshall, the chief of staff, told uh, Eisenhower, if you don't stand up as a fair, you're going to get cashiered out of the army. So I think the part of the complaint... But he didn't stop it. I mean, he took her all the way to the White House. What was it? No, he, he did, because when Summers B tried to fly into Washington uh, uh, to, to a private Air Force uh, 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 airport next to the Pentagon in the late 40s, Eisenhower cut it off, so he, Eisenhower knew that if he continued it, he was, his career was going to be... Right, that was when he was in the military. I'm talking about after 1952, she was back in the White House. But, well... Oh, oh so in other words, you're telling me that when, I, when Eisenhower became president, Summers Bee came back into his life. That's my understanding, yeah. I don't know about that. I can't speak to that. I will tell you this, as Commander-in-Chief, I think people have problems with the fact that as Commander-in-Chief, with Clinton, it just seemed uh, kind of an hypocrisy, and they did. I, I, I think you know the Republicans milked it for all they could. Ken Starr wrote a report that was as salacious and pornographic as he could possibly make it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think that most Americans don't really care. I mean, you know, I, we're not friends. I mean, you know, you had, uh, I think it was Mitterrand went to, uh, what was it, Charles de Gaulle's funeral? And when Mitterrand was uh, was president of France, and he had in one hand, on his right-hand side, he, has, he was holding his wife's hand, and on his left-hand side, he was holding his mistress's hand, standing at the graveside, officially. Um, you know, the current president, president of France just, you know, dumped his partner, and he's not married, but he just dumped his partner for a mistress. And, you know, the French are like, so what? You know, are you, do you know how to run the government? And, and, and I think that that was, by and large, the attitude of Americans. It was an open secret that Jack Kennedy was asleep with any, you know, with anybody, with any woman that got within 20 feet of it. Report on it. But, but let me tell you this. I, I, I was, you know, before, this was before Bush 43, who actually got people killed in Iraq and Afghanistan. But at the time, when this happened to Clinton, uh, I, I wanted him impeached because I thought he was dis disgusting. I, I lost all respect for him as a president. Yeah. I wanted him out of there. And the fact that Clinton, that Hillary would stay with him, I lost all respect for her, too. You know, if he was running an organization that was, that was uh, uh, you know, in charge of, uh, if he was a preacher, you know, if he was running an organization that was in charge of, uh, only morality. I suppose you could argue that the president of the United States is. But I mean, you know, Thomas Jefferson not only was having affairs, he was having sex with his slaves. I mean, it's, it's, I'm, I am, I, it does not, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm surprised it's not the wrong, not the right. There's, there's, not, I'm, I'm fascinated that it outraged you, David, that his, that his private consensual affair with another adult should cause him not to be qualified to be president of the United States. When that was, I, I would bet more than half of all the presidents of the United States had sex in the White House with somebody other than their wives. You know, in the 90s, at the time, I think um, it was so shocking and salacious that we thought, what's going on? And then there were other previous rumors about uh, about his uh, drug dealing, and drug, uh, excessive drug taking and whatever. And I think people felt like he was just an immoral. You know, I, you know I'm not buying it. You, you read Bill Clinton's biography. When he met Jack Kennedy when he was a young teenager, he decided he was going to become president of the United States. And, uh, you know, I, I, I buy his story that he smoked pot. Once. I don't buy his story that he didn't entail. <laughs> You're listening to Tom Hartman. This is NIH Health Matters. The immune system has two arms. Dr. Raphael Goldbach-Mansky at the National Institute of Arthritis and Musculoskeletal and Skin Diseases explains one
One is innate, we're born with it, and it doesn't change much. The other is adaptive, it's acquired as we live. So autoimmune diseases are actually caused by diseases in the adaptive immune system, the one that needs to be fine-tuned as we grow up. And they also, many of those develop later in life when we are older. A number of the auto-inflammatory diseases um, are caused by genetic mutation in the innate, in the um, uh, inherited form or, or hardwired form of the immune www.nih.gov Health Matters is produced by the National Institutes of Health, part of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Today in school I learned a lot. In chemistry, I learned that no one likes me. In English, I learned that I'm disgusting. And in physics, I learned that I'm a loser. Today in school, I learned that I'm ugly and useless. In the gym, I learned that I'm pathetic and a joke. In history, I learned that I'm trash. Today in school, I learned that I have no friends. In biology, in English, I learned that I make people sick. And at lunch, I learned that I sit on my own because I smell. In chemistry, I learned that no one In biology, I learned that I'm fat and stupid. And in math, I learned that I'm trash. The only thing I didn't learn in school today... The only thing I didn't learn today... The only thing I didn't learn... ...is why no one ever helps. Kids witness bullying every day. They want to help, but they don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at stopbullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. Rush Limbaugh, Ed Schultz, Sean Hannity, Tom Hartman, and more. Where left and right collide. AFN Radio's Power Talk. Do you like listening to Evil 810? Then download the AFN Pacific app for any smartphone or mobile device. Having the app just might win you free lunch. That's right, free lunch. Every Wednesday between 11 and noon at the Yakota Exchange Food Court, one lucky winner will get a free meal at their exchange restaurant of choice. All you have to do is show us that you have the app on your smartphone or mobile device, and a free lunch could be yours. Download the AFN Pacific app today. It just might pay for your lunch. So the age of technology provides us many opportunities. Opportunities to expand our horizons while preserving our environment. Take email, for example. Why don't you help eliminate paper waste by signing up to receive an outdoor recreation brochure by email? It's fast, easy, and free. What do you have to do? You have to send an email to zamaort at zama.army.mil with tour brochure requests in the subject box. That's it. who've been traveling for the long Thanksgiving holiday weekend are returning home today. The AAA says travel is picking up after a year's-long slowdown because of the recession. Here's the AAA's Heather Hunter. We have seen a steady increase since the recession, and the highest level of travelers this year since we've seen since 2007, so we're back to those pre-recession numbers. If you're not traveling, maybe you'll be trying to score a Cyber Monday bargain. Shoppers are expected to spend two and a half billion dollars online today. Our Anne Dinocenzio focuses on retail. We're seeing this bifurcated economy where some shoppers are feeling better about banks, so they don't really feel like they need to join the crowd and buy that discounted toaster or TV. Then others who are not feeling great about the economy, they don't have the money to shop and splurge over the Black Friday weekend, so they're kind of holding off and stretching their dollars. Do you have the right to go online and threaten to brutally kill someone? Today, the Supreme Court will hear the case of a Pennsylvania man convicted of threatening on Facebook to cut up his estranged wife, shoot up a kindergarten class, and attack an FBI agent. He says he didn't mean to threaten anyone. His lawyers say this is a free speech case. Egyptian militants say they have killed an American oil worker, 58-year-old William Henderson of Texas, published photos of his passport, but they don't say how or when they killed him. Ferguson, Missouri police officer Darren Wilson will not get severance after it was announced that he resigned over the weekend. That's what the mayor says. Meanwhile, five St. Louis Rams players stood with their arms raised in the hands-up gesture before going onto the field for their game yesterday. This is AP Radio News. The 
search for a missing Ohio State football player has ended tragically. Our Dave Ferry has this sad story. Police say missing Ohio State football player Kosa Kara George has been found dead, apparently of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Police tell media outlets Kara George was found near campus Sunday. The senior defensive tackle was last seen at his apartment in Columbus early Wednesday when roommates said he left to go on a walk. His mother told authorities he has had several concussions and a few spells of being extremely confused. According to a police report, she said Kara George texted her in the morning. He disappeared and said, quote, I am sorry if I am an embarrassment. I'm Dave Ferry. It's the leading cause of injury-related deaths in babies, accidental suffocation in bed. Researchers say too many babies sleep with blankets, pillows, or other unsafe bedding that may lead to suffocation or sudden infant death syndrome. Rita Foley, AP, Radio News. This is the Wall Street Journal report. I'm Jennifer Kashinka. Lawmakers returning to Capitol Hill today will have less than two weeks to figure out how to keep the government funded amid a fight between Republicans and the White House over immigration. With funding set to expire December 11th, lawmakers hope to pass a measure that would tie together spending bills to fund the government through next September. On Wall Street, futures indicating a lower open after stocks closed little changed on Friday. Paul Nolte of Kingsview Asset Management says investors will be keeping tabs on holiday spending. So it's going to be an important gauge for the consumer. That's one of the concerns that investors have had for uh, much of this year is how strong the consumer is, especially given the fact that they do not have uh, as much wage growth as we've seen in the past. Amazon has installed more than 15,000 robots across 10 warehouses to move that promises to cut operating costs by one-fifth and get packages out the door more quickly in the run-up to Christmas. And this is the Wall Street Journal report. From the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles. Checking week 13 of the NFL on Sunday Night Football, a big one in the AFC West where the Broncos go into Kansas City and knock off the Patriots 29-16. Denver's now won six straight games against their division rivals, Kansas City. Broncos are 9-3 and three now after the win, while the Chiefs dropped to 7-5 and five with the loss. In the late action on Sunday, game of the day was in Green Bay where the Packers held off the Patriots for a 26-21 victory. New England's seven-game winning streak was snapped. Their quarterback, Tom Brady, afterwards on the loss. We our chance was to I wish we'd have done something there at offense in the end. And, uh, you know, 21 points ain't going to be enough against a good team like that. So we've got to figure out how to you know, score more points. Both teams are now 9-3 on the season. Falcons surprised the Cardinals 29-18. Arizona's 9-3 now with its second straight loss. Atlanta at 5-7, leaving the NFC South and has a wild card spot at the moment. In early games of note, the Saints get five Drew Brees touchdown passes. <laughs>
Triangle. It's a, uh, it's a Black Friday special. You take two Sunni Triangle towns and the Iraqi army throw in the towel for free. Uh, I was in Ramadi a decade ago, and I'm, I'm rather sad to think it was all a, a waste of time over there. I had, had the mixed grill at a vein. I actually had the mixed grill everywhere I went in Iraq. <laughs> whenever, you, whenever you asked what the special was, uh, the Major D always said, uh, oh, it's mixed grill. And uh, uh, the mixed grill was always chicken. There was nothing to mix it with. It wasn't that mixed. It was an unmixed grill. It was this. Uh, it, was, it was this very uh, tough old rubbery chicken that Saddam Hussein should have pardoned uh, 20 years earlier. And that was basically the mixed grill special everywhere. Every Iraqi restaurant I set foot in had the mixed grill. Um, but they've. Uh, but as I said, I had a, a nice time in Ramadi, and I'm rather sad to think of the black flag of ISIS. Uh, now flying over the town hall, uh, lavishly rebuilt uh, with American tax dollars, not to mention uh, the blood of American soldiers. Uh, so that's uh, how the Islamic State are marking uh, Black Friday. By the way, at the Islamic State discount burger warehouse, every day is Black Friday, ladies, so don't miss it. Uh, if you're heading home from Grandma's and you're passing through the nation's capital, get theirs free, so that's great news too. If you are heading for the White House gift shop um, and you're looking to pick up the United States Constitution, tough luck, they're, uh, they're all out. Obama says there was a copy around here somewhere, but uh, no one's seen it in years. From the Washington Examiner, uh, my old colleague Byron York reports, did President Obama change the law or not? when he unilaterally decided that millions of illegal immigrants in the U.S. would be protected against deportation. Until this week, both the President and the White House staff insisted that Obama did not change the law, and indeed could not change the law, without the cooperation of Congress. Obama's move was just a revision of executive branch enforcement priorities, according to the official White House line. A Justice Department memo backed up the President's contention. Fast forward to Tuesday when Obama was speaking on immigration reform to a group in Chicago. When protesters began yelling at Obama to stop all deportations, the president became frustrated and answered. And bear, bear in mind here, he's off the prompter now. The most interesting things Obama says, the ones that give you the real insight into his thinking, are when he's off the prompter. So people are yelling at him because he hasn't amnestied all... 11, 12, 15, 30 million uh, illegal, undocumented Americans in this country. Uh, so he, uh, he gets frustrated and he goes off the prompter and he says, quote, there have been significant number of deportations, that's true, but what you're not paying attention to is the fact that I just took action to change the law. So having insisted that the president did not change the law, he is now bragging, pandering to uh, these uh, protesters in Chicago that in fact, quote, I just took action to change the law. Who needs Article 2 of the Constitution? Who needs any of this stuff? We're in a post-constitutional order. Uh, and the law is no more than what the regime can get away with at any particular time. What, 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 what's that thing, the uh, First Amendment? How does that go? Quote, Congress shall make no law. Well, that's enough. Hold it, hold it right there. New First Amendment. Congress shall make no law. I, King Barack, shall make the law. Uh, and that was Obama in Chicago this week. Quote, I just took action to change the law. Uh, did you... Did you uh, here, Hillary Rodham Clinton, with her usual uh, tin in. This is, by the, uh, by the way, Hillary Clinton. Uh, I didn't think Obama was great on the stump in 2008, but he was better than Hillary Clinton. And you can see that for, for Democrats, he was the right guy at the right time. If, if Hillary Clinton, who is one of the most tin-eared, clumsy, uh, uh, tone-deaf politicians uh, to ever come along, can manage to get elected... Uh, president, then there really is no hope for America. This is what she said. She was speaking at the New York Historical Society and announcing her support for uh, 
for King Barak's pro proclamation. This is about people's lives, she said. People who served us tonight, who prepared the food tonight. So she's just accused the New York Historical Society, by the way, of hiring illegal immigrants. Um, but, uh, but that's, it's, again, uh, I find it hard to believe, even if things go as badly for the Republican Party as they generally do, uh, that, that the Democrats can manage to drag someone as tone-deaf, tin-eared, uh, someone basically not cut out for uh, electoral uh, politics in functioning democratic societies. If they can manage to drag her uh, across the finish line, there's no hope uh, for the Republic. Um, but, uh, yeah, so she, she, that's what she said there, the people who served us our food tonight. <laughs> New York Historical Society, they're hiring illegals now. Go along and, and fill in an application form with a fake social security number. Uh, did you see the president? This, again, is how you know the president's confident he's not going to get any meaningful pushback on this. He was doing amnesty gags at that uh, pitiful... Uh, leaden pardoning of the Thanksgiving turkey routine they do at the White House uh, every year. Quote, some will call this amnesty, he joked. He granted two turkeys amnesty from Thanksgiving dinner. One of those 12-year-old teleprompter writers wrote him some amnesty shtick. He granted the turkeys amnesty uh, so they no longer have to, have to face the threat of being deported to your dining room table. Ha <laughs> ha, whatever. Um, by, the, by the way, uh, if you... Now that you've enjoyed your turkey, did you know the turkey, uh, like it?